In this video, we're going to look at links in HTML. Let's take a quick look at the site that I've created, or the page I've created. This is a shorter version of what I expect you to create for homework. I have several categories, and you'll notice each category here has a, at the bottom, a link to the top. There's actually what's called an anchor at the top of the page that lets me link to things on the page. I also have anchors that are for each of my headings so I can use them to navigate in the page. So I'm going to talk about three primary kinds of links today. I'm going to talk about your local link which is relative to the page that you're on, an absolute link which is an address somewhere out on the internet, and then a link to somewhere on your page. You can also use images as links. You can see when I hover over the image that it turns, my pointer turns into a hand and it shows you that it's a link to maryhelp.net, my website. And if I click on it, I will get out to my website, which is created in Drupal so the code looks a little funky. Let's go back. Okay, let's take a look at the code for this page. Let's start right at the top. Um, of course, we have our doc type. This is being done in HTML5, language English. In my head I have meta tags for the content type. It's a text HTML document and I have a title called links which shows up at the top. We've seen all that all before. In the body, at the very top, I have my link here which is for my image. You can see the image when I hover over it is right here. It also shows you how big it is. So I have my image with a zero border so that it does not highlight blue when I mouse over it. And then it has the link that to that, which is your hyperreference href to htt colon slash slash maryhelp.net. This is considered a static link. It's going out to the internet and so it gives us an exact address including HTTP. You'll need to use an exact address to any link that is not part of your local website. Alright, so that's attached to an image. Then I have up at the top I have the list of links that I find useful and as part of that H1 tag I have an anchor and the anchor has a name of top. I can link to this and that will take me to the anchor on that page. So you'll see links to the top later and that's links to the anchor on this page. Then I have my links to the lower spots in the page. When you're linking to a spot in the same page, use the number sign and then the name of the anchor that you're linking to. So my anchors are named Tutorial, Free, and Personal. So if I were to click on Tutorials, it takes me right here. That'll take me to the top Tutorial Sites. And in this heading, I, you'll see that I have an anchor called Tutorials. And so for each of these, I have my anchor name equals Tutorials. Tutorial Sites, it's an H2 tag. I have an unordered list here. You can tell it's unordered because there are bullets. And each list item has a link. Again, this is a link to an actual page. You can tell that because it's, that it's not part of my site because I include the HTTP and the slashes here. When I use a target underscore blank, that tells me that when I open that, it opens it in a completely new tab. That breaks the back button. Sometimes you want to do that, sometimes you don't. If you are opening it in a new tab or new window, you are typically opening it because it's a link that's not on your site and you want the person to automatically see your site still open when they, cause that, when they call that link. So it's common to open to a blank page or a new page if you're leaving your own site. So you'll see each of those links takes you to an external site. I don't have any links in here to a local site in my page, but I will show you some in a few minutes. So here again I have a link to somewhere on the page, the top. Now 
for my classes, let's go out and look at my website. And these are just samples that I do for my classes. So you can see here I have links on each one of these. I don't, know, don't need the head, I need the body. And I'm using a layout here and here are my links. So here, this is actually going to a static page, web scripting. Let's go take a look at that. But these links are all referring to pages, and let's expand it, inside of my site. So I don't have an HTTP reference in here. I'm going to my Unit 4 folder inside my site, Unit 4-HTML. So I have to include the folder path. Since it's inside this folder, I include the folder and then the name of the page, and that will take me there. So Unit 4 Assignment 1, I'm in mary.mccdgm.net, CIS142, Unit 4, Unit 4-1. But this is the only part I needed to code because my index page with those links were at the CIS142 folder level. So I would conclude the subfolder and then the name of the page. If I just had a link to the subfolder only with no name here, it would look for an index page by default. So those are your three kind of links. When you're linking to an external page, you have to include the HTTP. If you're linking to a page in the same site, you need to include the folder structure. And if you are in linking to a place on your current page, you have to create an anchor with a name to link to. And then when you link to it, you need to include the pound sign.